Hey friends, in this quick video, I'm going to show you my NeoVim setup and a bunch of other terminal tools that I've been using. This is inspired by a tweet that I shared a couple days ago where I put this screenshot here and I got a lot of people interested in knowing how I got my NeoVim to look the way it looks. So let's get started. The first tool I want to look into is called Starship and this is essentially a customizable prompt for my shell. And as you can see, it adds some information to your terminal. So for example, if you look at mine, you see that we have the branch name, we have some diff information and the language that I'm using inside of this directory. The next tool we're going to look into is called Zogside. And this tool essentially remembers all the directories you visit and you can basically jump right back in by using Z and then the folder name or directory name. It's written in Rust, it's super fast and it's really helpful when you're navigating your file system. Next we have bat, which is a clone for the common tool called cat. And what this does, it prints out the content of a file, but with syntax highlighting, and it has also some Git integration. Next we have LSD, which is also written in Rust, and this replaces LS. It adds some colors and icons and more ways to format whenever you're listing your files. Next, if you don't want to see the icons whenever you say ls, you can use exa, which does essentially the same thing, but it doesn't have the icons. And finally, in terms of tools, I use lazy git to manage my git in my terminal. It adds a very nice UI to see your git commits and the changes, etc. Then I use ripgrep, which is a Rust implementation for grep. And then I use fcf for fuzzy finding. Next, I want to mention this Chrome extension, which is basically an extension that allows you to navigate the browser with the same Vim keyboard shortcuts that you're used to. So to show you how this works, here I am inside of the Kitty web page, and if I hit F, you see that it shows you a lot of characters. And for example, let's say I want to go to this design philosophy here. If I hit A, you see it filters them out to all the A's on the browser, and then if you hit C, it navigates to that place. For my terminal, I use Alacrity, which is a Rust-based terminal. It is super fast and it's configurable using YAML. So I can show you my configuration now. So here I am inside of the alacrity.yaml file, and you see I am using asafmono nerd font, I have my opacity set to 0 0.98 and I do have a bunch of colors that I have set here and the way I change them is by simply going all the way down and I'll basically set, set this colors value to whatever color scheme I have defined up there. So for my editor I use NeoVim and I specifically use LunarVim which is a distribution for NeoVim and the reason why I use this one is because it comes with all the same defaults. It has all the plugins and configurations that you might expect in a modern editor. And it also, whenever you install it, it does not really interfere with your NVIM directory. So it kind of installs itself in a different place, which means that you can still configure and use NVIM as if it's a separate editor. Now, let me walk you through my and Vim configuration. So if I open up my config files, we see that we have a nice dashboard that comes with this distribution. If you open the explorer, we see we have this config.lua, which is the only file you have whenever you install this distribution. You can basically configure everything inside of this one file. And as you can see, I have some config here, but I also have some other stuff put into this Lua user directory. So if we look at our plugins, you see I'm using Groovebox material as my main color scheme. Then I use Vimgo and Gopher for my Go development. Uh, and if you go down, I use Rust tools and crates for my Rust development. So we also have this trouble, which shows you some diagnostics in a very nice way. I have this symbols outline, which is, you can see it by saying, space O here, and 
what this shows you is basically an outline of your file. And then we have this Zen mode and I have it mapped to control X and it basically puts everything in the middle and cleans up the screen for you. Yeah, and that's pretty much most of the plugins I'm using. It works pretty good. Now to show you how I use Rust tools and crates inside of a Rust project, here you see I have a pretty simple Rust to-do app, or it's an API written in Axum. So if I hit space, which is my leader key, I see all my options here, and I have the Rust tools mapped to R, and when I press R, I see whatever options it provides. So for example, if I hit R again, I have this mapped to the runnables. If I press one and enter, this will run all my tests. And if I hit leader key again, R, and then press on C, this will open my cargo toml. So if I go to this version here, for example, if I hit space and I have it, um, I have T mapped to the Rust crates plugin. If I hit T and then press on, for example, V, this will show me all the versions that have that are available for this specific crate. And I can basically change it on the fly. If I go to this features here, I can hit space and then press T and then F. This will show me all the features that we can add to this one. So if I hit space TF again, I can kind of go through them. Let's say I want to add FS, I hit enter and now it's added. This is pretty handy. And yeah, that's pretty much how I use this. You can see all the options whenever you hit leader R or leader T. And you can basically use all these things pretty fast. You don't have to see this kind of which key popping up if you kind of memorize them. I'm showing it slowly so you can see what's available. And yeah, that's how I use Rust tools and the crates plugin. Finally, I want to show you how I use Tmux. So as you can see, my Tmux background is transparent and it's pretty minimal. There's not much going on there. I intentionally made it that way so it's not distracting. If I show you my configuration file, there's a lot of things going on here. I'm not going to go over every line, but there's a couple things I want to show you. So the first one is here. So you can see the background is set to default and that's what allows me to make it transparent. And then I have this interesting thing here, which is kind of a fuzzy finder for your sessions. So if I hit prefix J, this shows me all my sessions. And for example, I can go to Rust, prefix J again, go back to my configs. This is really helpful and it just speeds up your workflow. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you liked it. I'll leave links in the description below for all the config files I've seen here. Obviously, I did not go into everything in details. My goal was just to show you an overview of how things are set up. There's a lot to talk about here, but maybe I'll leave that for a future video. And I'll see you in the next one.